Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to your week four commentary for the NFL. Here we have the Jets with a toss play to Bilal Powell, and unlike a student attending Penn State, he was not touched. And he's off to the races, running away from the defense like he's a prostitute who owes Cat Williams money. And he's into the end zone for the score for the Jets. Meanwhile, in Texas, Ezekiel Elliott looks a whole lot like Tracy Morgan in the longest yard. Let's go out to London where Jay Cutler is doing Jay Cutler things. I've seen more effort from Stevie Wonder at a book reading. We head right back out to Dallas where Alfred Morris runs through a hole that's tighter than a nun's vagina, and he's free like OJ Simpson this morning and he's running down the field but player one is taking their finger off of the turbo button and the Rams defense tackle Alfred Morris inside the five yard line. We head out to Baltimore where Alejandro Villanueva is using Zen headbutt as if he's some sort of psychic Pokemon. We go out to Foxborough where Tom Brady's dropping back looking for Rob Gronkowski. Rob Gronkowski with the catch and he tells the defender to get your bitch ass off of me and throws him to the floor. However, early in the game the Patriots were not informed that Cam Newton showed up to the field wearing the Timberlands on his feet. When you see the Tims, you know he's gonna win the damn game. If you do not know the powers of the Timberlands, please open your Bible, turn to Tim's OT5. I can do all things through Tim's that strengthen me. We head out to Baltimore where the Ravens are attempting to run the ball, but they didn't recognize that the Fox from Door to Explorer showed up and swipe but keeps swiping. He fumbles the ball and is recovered by the Pittsburgh Steelers. We turn our cameras back to Dallas where the Rams are getting ready to punt the ball back to the Cowboys. And I heard it's Halloween this month. What's your favorite chocolate to put inside of your basket? But the fingers is my favorite chocolate. And he fumbles the ball and it's recovered by the Rams. We head out to Baltimore where the Pittsburgh Steelers are inside of the period colored zone where Big Ben pump fakes once. He throws it over the middle, gets the ball to Juju Smith Sousa, and he goes into the end zone for the score and it seems he must have been training with the turtle hermit as he charges up a Kame Kame Ha and he shoots it out of his arms and it somehow got to Atlanta and hit Matt Ryan in the legs. We push our cameras further to the east coast where the Jets favorite cereal is tricks as they go for the fake punt but it seems there's a little bit of friendly fire coming from number 45 but number 20 can escape and go down the sideline and he's out of bounds at the 21 yard line. We turn our cameras to Houston where the Tennessee Titans are just getting absolutely killed out there on the field. Just look as the Titans are getting destroyed. That's Marcus Mariota. Right there is DeMarco Murray, they can't do anything. We head right back out to the dirty, dirty south, where Matt Ryan is dropping back in the pocket. He's hit from behind, he throws a fumble, the ball is recovered by the Bills. The Falcons thought the play was dead, but it still has a heartbeat, it still has a pulse. The Buffalo Bills pick it up, they run into the end zone at the five, end zone touchdown Bills. We head right back out to New York, where the New York Jets hand the ball off to Elijah McGuire, and he's running away from the defense the same way Safari ran away from Meek Mill and the Dream Chasers. He's at the 25 to the 20, they're 15, 10, 5, touchdown Jets. And we head out to Foxborough to take a live look at the Patriots defense. Back out to Baltimore we go. We have Big Ben standing there in the pocket and he's looking to make a play. He drops back. He's looking to go deep. He throws 15 pounds of weed to Martavis Bryant and it's just out of his reach. You know he wanted to catch that. <laughs> We head right back out to Dallas where Jared Goff is dropping back in the pocket. He throws the ball to Todd Gurley and Todd Gurley is breaking free from the defense like Zach Efron and Vanessa Hudgens on a high school musical soundtrack as he goes in for the score. We head out to Foxborough where the power of Timberlands are clearly at work as we have Cam Newton running the ball up the gut into the end zone for his record 50th rushing touchdown as a quarterback. The power of Timberlands will always prevail. <laughs> We head out to Tampa Bay where the Giants are trying to generate some sort of offense and obviously nobody's open because the Giants ain't shit and Eli Manning runs to the 10-5 into the end zone for the touchdown for his first rushing touchdown in three years. Is he going to do a celebration? No. Who's Manning is this? We head out to Denver where Trevor Simeon runs a play action fake. He's looking to push the ball down the field. He throws a ball and it's caught one handed by the Denver receiver and goes into the end zone. Look how disgusting and filthy that was. No, I'm not speaking about Amy Schumer's vagina. I'm talking about that catch. We go out to Los Angeles where there's another beautiful one hand catch. But did it help the Chargers win? Absolutely not. Back to Tampa where we got Eli Manning getting the ball to Odell Beckham where he does his best impersonation of a hitman on top and what? spin move and he gets away from the Bucks defense. We head back out to Los Angeles where LeGarrette Blunt is showcasing the power of dreadlocks. He takes the Chargers defense to church. He says John 14 verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody can get to the Father except through me. Therefore Desmond King, I baptize you in the name of the Father. I baptize you in the name of the Son and I baptize you in the name of the Holy Spirit. And he's tackled at the four yard line. We head back out to Foxborough where the Carolina Panthers are lining up to kick the game winning field goal. And the power of Timberlands carries the ball through the uprights and it's good. When in doubt, trust in the Timberlands and they will win you the out. We turn our cameras to Arizona where there's 37 seconds left in overtime. Carson Palmer's looking to try to get a score. He throws the ball to Larry Fitzgerald. He catches the ball for the touchdown and the Cardinals win, but he can't stand up because he just broke his back. The doctors have to now diagnose him with scoliosis, kyphosis, lumbar stenosis, and lumbar lordosis for carrying around this bum-ass team for the last eight years. Will the 49ers finally get a victory? Find out on the next episode of the NFL Takes a Knee.